Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and we are continuing with our series of drafts here. And, you know, I, I keep taking L's. I, I, don't, I don't like this. The L streak needs to end, but hopefully that ends today because we are not doing a tier list of David Fincher movies, but we are going to draft his films. Matt has now won three in a row. We tied that one before, but technically I'm ahead of that now. So, you know, I'm going to kind of take the win for that. So Matt's on a three-game <laughs> streak. So I hope that it ends today. But because he won last time, that means he has the first overall pick today. Dylan, I'm going to be honest with you. I think you will win this one uh, we'll because see. there's a clear top three for David Fincher. Very, very clear top three. Um, top three is Social Network, Fight Club, and Seven. Um I am going to take one. You're going to get the other two. And then I'm going to be honest with you. I am probably going to throw the game after that because I really love a lot of the Fincher films that other people don't love. And some of the films that other people absolutely adore from David Fincher, I am not the biggest fan of. I like them. I I wouldn't say I am over the moon about a handful of his films. Um, and so I do think I'm going to lose this one. But for my first pick, uh, it's a really tough choice. You know, I feel like the right pick is Fight Club here. But I'm not going to take Fight Club. I am going to take The Social Network, which is, honestly, it's the Citizen Kane of the uh, 21st century, which might foreshadow one of my next picks. Um, but Social Network is, uh, it's a masterpiece. It is one of the greatest screenplays ever written. It is wildly funny, which is something that I think a lot of people overlook about this movie. It is witty, it is so smart, and it is one of genuinely the most compelling dramas. They took the founding of Facebook, which people thought, you know, this is a, a joke at the time. They did not take this film seriously until it released and suddenly was oh my God, incredible. Uh, but they took the founding of Facebook and they turned it into a, a rags to riches, empire backstabbing story. Uh, it's almost Shakespearean in scope. I love The Social Network. It is one of my 10 favorite films of all time and that's why I have to take it there. Well, to follow up The Social Network, which is in your top 10 favorite movies of all time, give me one that's in my top four and that would be seven. I think this is David Fincher's best, wow. and it's my favorite from him. It has great performances from its leading three. Honestly, you could say leading four. And then I just think the story is so engaging. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's perfect for rewatches. I think this is his most rewatchable movie. And, I mean, you say that you may not love some movies that David Fincher fans adore. Social Network is one of those for me. I think it's great. But I wouldn't put it in his top five. So um, wow. I'm glad that you took it there. So I wouldn't be oh, pulled the decision I of if I should or it. if I shouldn't. But you mentioned a top three. And I really do like the third one of that top three. But there's one other one I love even more. And I'm hoping that one other one I love more is one that you may not like as much. Because I need to be smart here. I need to take movies that I like and I know other people like. So give me another Brad Pitt, David Fincher collab. And this is going to be Fight Club. Okay. For a second there I was like, damn, he's really gonna he's gonna throw it. He's gonna give me Fight Club. Um I almost did. It was, it was like this close. It was like this close. Damn. Uh, but Fight Club is a I think it's a great movie. Yeah, it's had a little bit of revisionist history because of people not understanding the movie, but Fincher nails what he's trying to go for. Edward Norton and Brad Pitt, they're great in this movie. Uh the comedy really works here. This is one of his most funny movies that we have so far. And um yeah, I think we are three for three with picking great David Fincher movies, and uh, I'm pretty sure these three would be everyone's number one. So now I think this is where the draft gets interesting. Where do you go from here? Oh, this is where it gets very, very interesting. Because, um, yeah, there are a lot of great films that he's made. Um, and I, honestly, there's, like I said, some that I like but I don't love. Uh, but I'm going to go with two that I really do love here and the first one of those two is going to be mank um so you, now you see why i'm like i'm throwing the draft mank is my third favorite david fincher movie i actually prefer this to seven personally um to me mank is exceptional i love citizen kane it is one of my four favorite movies of all time if you're talking about seven being in your letterboxed four 
Citizen Kane is in mine. And Mank is the perfect encapsulation of what makes Citizen Kane special. Um, it is drenched in that old Hollywood glamour. Honestly, everything that I think I wanted Babylon to be, Mank actually was. Okay. Uh, it's beautifully written. Performances are great. The soundtrack is incredible. It's another amazing Reznor and Ross score, which I didn't even mention for The Social Network. Mank gets a lot of flack. A unfairly, I would say. I think this is a, a glorious ode to one of the greatest films of all time. And to follow that up, I'm going to take Gone Girl. Ah, uh, that's, that's the is, one I was talking about earlier. That's the one you were talking about? Okay, the, I love Gone Girl. Me Rosamund too. Pike gives one of what I think is one of the greatest performances of all time in this movie. Um, she gives one of the greatest performances of all time, I believe, as Amy Dunn. The whole cast is great, too. You get rare, incredible work from Ben Affleck, from Tyler right. Perry. Stop the hate. Stop the hate. They're so good in everything they do. Ben Affleck is, I'm going to say he is great in many things. I would not say he's one of the greatest actors of our generation, but he is a very talented man when it comes to many other things. And sometimes he gets great roles, like Gone Girl, where he knocks it out of the park. Um, And yeah, everything about this movie is fantastic. I love the way that it flips on its head halfway. And it has one of my favorite screenwriting conventions in it, which is when you take the first and last shot of the movie and you parallel them you put them in conversation with each other i think this does that perfectly honestly i i am overdue for a rewatch of gone girl it is an incredible movie and i want to go back to it it's so good i would agree gone girl is one of my personal favorite david finchers as well it would be my number two slightly just behind seven I think this is another insanely rewatchable movie. It keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's got great acting performances. It also has humor, which is something I feel like a lot of people don't think David Fincher movies have. But both of these movies very much do have them. Uh, But I won't shower Gone Girl on too much love because I want people to vote for me. And that's why I am taking Zodiac here next. I think this is just another one of Fincher diving into the darker side of his catalog. Um, it's, a, again, another movie with three great performances at the top. And this is a movie where I think it's a little bit more divisive. I think this is the first, I mean, make, I guess, but this is the second divisive movie that we have so far on the list where people either adore it or they think it's severely overrated. But I'm in the camp of very much liking Zodiac. And to follow that up with, maybe I'm throwing here. Maybe. But I am a fan of The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and I want it on my team. This is one of David Fincher's few Best Picture nominations, which you think you see this filmography, like, oh, he must have five, six Best Picture nominations. No, but this is one of them, and uh, I think it's very worthy. I think it has some great technicals in this movie, something I feel like neither of us have talked about, really. Fincher movies are usually very technically well-made, sound, if not the best in their category, one of the best of the year, and Benjamin Button is that as well. I like how this kind of sticks out like a sore thumb from the rest of his catalog. This is more of a drama. There's no real thriller elements. There's no real like seat gripping stuff. It's just the story of a man living his life basically in reverse. And I think it's very warming. I think it's very warm. It's one that I could see myself just putting on like, I want to watch that again. Mm-hmm. Shout out how uh, three out of four of your titles right now are Brad Pitt movies. You know that that's a good point, but I maybe I haven't learned in the past. I've done this. I have had this strategy in the past where I draft a lot of the same movies from a director. We had this with our Scorsese draft. Didn't work out there. Maybe it works out here. I uh, we'll we'll have to see. I love Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Zodiac is one of the ones that I was talking about where I'm a little bit colder on it. I like it. I do not love Zodiac. I think that its emotional distance from the subject matter is both uh, its strongest point and its weakest point. And I think for my next pick here, huh, um, I could really throw the game here, but I'm not that passionate about the ones that I would throw the game for. Uh, like with Mank, you know, I love Mank so much that I I don't care that people see it as a low-tier David Fincher movie. So I'm going to reach down a little bit to a film that I like, but I don't love. In fact, I actually think the Swedish version of this film is much, much superior to this one. Uh, this is just a good movie in my mind. It is not a great one, and that's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Um, to me, if you want this story 
watch the the Swedish originals. They are so compelling, so well done. This is technically masterful, but again, it kind of suffers from that technical perfection that David Fincher so often has, where his movies are so perfect that sometimes they're a little sterile. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like, they feel like they could have been made by a machine rather than a, a human at times. And I really get that with Zodiac and I really get that with the girl with the dragon tattoo, but it's still a good movie. It's still a compelling story. The bones are all there. I just wish that it was a little bit less mechanical, I guess. That said, score, one of Reznor and Ross's very best. And to finish off my list, I'm going to take The Game, a twisty, turny, excellent thriller. This just takes you deep into this crazy mystery where I feel like I had no idea the entire time which way was up and which way was down. Big fan of the game. I haven't seen it in a long time. I can't speak much more to it, but uh, it definitely left me thinking for a very long time. That leaves three films on the board. We have Panic Room, which I'll admit is the one David Fincher movie I have yet to see. So that one is off of my options here. And that leaves me with the obvious pick here, Alien 3, which I'm not going to pick because that would just make my team too overpowered. So instead... I mean, we're doing this draft for a reason. A brand new David Fincher movie just came out on Netflix, and we've just drafted three films in a row that start with V. So let's make it four, and this will be the killer. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about it in the upcoming What We've Been Watching videos. So if you are not currently subscribed to the channel, definitely click that button down below. But I very much did enjoy this movie. I was on its wavelength, on its vibe, and I think it does been very miraculous with its editing and camera movements but you know more on that later but i am happy to add the killer to my team of five that's a good pick the killer is really strong panic room is one that i was thinking about taking but i i didn't want to throw the game too much mm -hmm. you know so uh, as much as i love panic room it's the one it's the one you haven't seen. It's the one most people haven't seen. It's the one that I feel like everyone forgets David Fincher made. Anyways, my team consists of the social network, then Mank, little controversial there, followed by Gone Girl, the girl with the dragon tattoo, and the game. I'm still mad that you sniped Gone Girl. I, I really want to take it but I didn't want to throw the game because I have seven Fight Club, Zodiac, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, and The Killer. As always, go over to the YouTube community tab. The poll will be here. Vote any way that you feel that you need to vote. The team with the best film. The team with the best catalog of films. The team that just doesn't have the worst movie you want to take your pick however you want. <laughs> we just want your votes out there. But definitely you know, maybe consider the team that has the best collection of films. But let us know down below what movie would you take first of all. I mean, The Social mm -hmm. Network, Seven, Fight Club. I think there's even a case for Gone Girl, but maybe I'm crazy. I would love to hear. But until <laughs> next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt, and this has been Fantasy Film Ball.